I think they're doing a good job running the ball um, and off of that taking play action shots, especially to John Brown, 13's getting deep, getting behind secondaries and uh, Flacco's hitting him. Joe, you're, you're no longer on special teams, but you broke into this league, being a vital member of the front special teams. Uh, what do you make of what's going on in that unit this year? I think uh, just like every unit on the field, there's mistakes that are being made. Uh, offense, defense, and special teams. Special teams, unfortunately, is a one-play thing. So when you can make a mistake, you don't get a second chance to come back and play it over again. you got to just live with it. Um, and that's why it's hard. You're playing in open field, open space. So it, when you, somebody does make a mistake, it can be more glaring than on offense, defense. Plus but in a tight game that you always are in, mm -hmm. it seems to be magnified. Yeah, I mean, I definitely. When you only have one play to make a chance or make an opportunity, it's definitely magnified. You mentioned how John Brown's been getting past secondaries. With your secondary that's banged up, is there any added emphasis to get home on Flacco from the front seven? I think a uh, normal emphasis on getting home. Like every quarterback, you want to get pressure in his face, make him move off his spot. So when he does throw his deep shots, he's a little bit off, less accurate, and we can go make plays on it. Um, obviously, John Brown's somebody you have to take into account with his deep, his deep speed, his ability to track the ball, and Flacco can really throw it out there and make him go run under it and catch it. So I think getting in his face, making him throw off his back foot, definitely help us in those situations. Well, they're getting back their first round tight end for this game. Yeah, I think they, they're they a very tight end heavy, more so than what we've played uh, offense. And they do a good job utilizing all their tight ends and all the skill sets. Like each tight end has a different sort of skill set, and they uh, find ways, they scheme ways to take advantage of it. So we really have to be on our P's and Q's in that aspect. And <clears throat> we've seen what this kid could do a little bit in the preseason. He's a, a very good receiver. He can make some plays in the passing game. So we just have to be ready for it. What is the key to covering tight ends? We, we, we asked a lot about it last year. Um, the Cooks had a big game uh, on Sunday. What's the key for limiting the, the damage that tight ends can do to you from a defensive Yeah, I think definitely tight ends, a lot of schematics go into that too. With play action passes, being able to have your eyes on your key, not biting on the play action, letting them get a step behind you um, right in the middle of the field because that's the easiest throw for a quarterback, just to throw it right in the middle of the field over the ball. Um, and then just be able to take away their known playmakers when they are known playmakers. If you say you're going to play somebody man-to-man, -man, he's not going to catch the ball, don't let him catch the ball. Um, so you just got to step up in that regard. Is, um, is, is Joe Flacco, is it, does he look to you on film like he's back to his old self now? Yeah, I think definitely this year he's, I know last year he was injured, he had that back problem. He didn't practice much in training camp, I don't think. Um, this year you can definitely tell he's come back, he's feeling healthier, he's slinging the ball around, moving a little better in the pocket. Um, so it's just another thing we're going to have to go into the game uh, ready for, kind of his big arm, his ability to throw the ball down the field. Joe, yeah, there's no question that this team's offense is better. He's um, 42 points. Defense is better, leading in a lot of uh, key categories. It just feels like if the special teams would just up their play a little, it would be enough to overcome some of these situations you guys are in. Is there an urgency in that regard on this team this week? I think there's an urgency overall. Yeah, like, yeah you can say that. Um, like at the end of the game, they had their big punt return that got them in the scoring position. But then again, at the end of the game, you can say if <laughs> offense just got one clear first down, the game's over. If the defense stops, the touchdown from happening in two minutes, the game's over. If the defense stops a two-point conversion from being scored, the game's over. So, yeah, obviously um, we need to be better in all aspects and areas we're weak at or we've been weak at, we need to improve and fix immediately. Um, but there's definitely, it's not just special teams, it's a whole team added effort and attitude. And there's been mistakes all over the field that just keep us barely from winning that we need to just clean up. And uh, we could be 4-0 and right now, but because of certain things here and there, we're not. And it's a whole team game. Do you, uh, the resiliency has really shown in these first four games, the, the ability to come from behind, uh, the ability to bounce back from a bad play. Um, is, is that something that you feel that you can carry forward and it'll help you 
start to learn to finish these games? I mean, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I think the biggest thing that comes with that is just uh, more experience, people being around longer. I think when you first come into the league and you make a mistake, you just get worried in your head, like, is coach going to yell at me? Like, I made a mistake, and you let it affect the next play. I think as the older people get, the more they've been around the league, the more they see how things can change from play to play. And you just got to wipe whatever just happened uh, in the last play off the board, coming into the next play with a new attitude, and try to make a game-changing play then. If you let them stack up uh, on you and start going downhill, that's uh, that's when it starts going wrong. And I definitely think this team's starting to turn the corner on that aspect a little bit. Um, obviously, this last week, we didn't do that in the fourth quarter in overtime. We kind of let it stack up with the injuries, the calls, the missed opportunities, all that stuff. Um, so we just got to keep taking lessons and improving on it. But I definitely feel like we're taking steps in that direction. You guys lose Terrence for at least eight weeks. Demarius is out there playing sub 100%. The challenge of trying to compensate for those injuries now, because you really felt good about the defense earlier, but now you got some pieces that are missing or not, you know, in, in, in full strength. Yeah, definitely. Football is a game of attrition. Things are going to happen. People are going to get injured. It's a next man up philosophy, and we have full confidence in the guys who are going to be practicing this week during the week that they'll be on their A game. They'll be studying and preparing and getting their bodies physically ready to play another AFC North opponent. Um, and you know, nobody in this league is ever going to be at full strength, and if they are, it's never for very long. That's the nature of the game. So it's an X-Men up league, and we got guys who are ready to step up. You're a guy that plays a lot of snaps last year. I think you missed a snap. This year you're on a, on a similar trajectory. What does it take to be out there for every single snap? And then also, might it be beneficial uh, for certain guys to maybe miss a snap here and there in the first half? to be fresher in the fourth quarter, not you specifically, but yeah. just in general, just being out there for every single defensive snap. I mean, that, that's quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of luck involved in terms of injuries, bumps, stingers, whatever you could get during a game. And then definitely when you have a, a, ro a good rotation, something you feel comfortable with, getting people breathers during the game and Situa uh, certain drives or situations so they can come back and have fresher legs towards the end of the game is huge. If you can do that, sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes with injuries or personnel, the way things to shake out, the people who dress, only 46 people dress on game day. So you don't have a lot of backup like you do in college. So you really have to take all that into account. But if you can do it, it can have been, uh, beneficial. It can be beneficial. Are you one of those guys that you get stronger the more you're out there? I definitely like, yeah. you feel like you're stronger in the fourth quarter than you are in the first quarter? I like playing a lot. And because you definitely, when I go out of the game, I feel like you fall in and out of groove faster. So when you play the, all the snaps, everything, um, or when you're in the game, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, I always like playing in the game because I feel like I can get into my groove. And once you can get in that groove, you can maintain it. But when you play a series and you feel like you get in the groove, and then you stop for a series and then you come back, I uh, definitely think it can throw you off. But different people handle it different ways. That's just personally for me how I feel. Um, but other guys might be different. Have you told Greg I don't want to come off the field? No, I haven't said that, but <laughs> that's just the nature of playing the mic. Yeah.